Hey, it's Joe with Jolie Farms. Welcome back to the channel. Glad you joined us today. We're going to talk about something we don't normally talk about here on the channel, and that is food dehydrators. Um, we do like to talk about canning food and preserving food and saving food, and we've done that in the past. But we get a lot of questions about, can I buy a dehydrator in Ecuador? The answer is yes. So I'm going to make some suggestions today about how, when, where you should buy those. And uh, we'll just kind of share you, with you our experiences. So the first dehydrator that we bought in Ecuador, we bought from a little company called T. Ventus. And that was located in the Supermaxi Plaza in Loja. So they were the square plastic ones that had um, heater on the bottom, basically inside, and you stack the hard plastic trays on top of each other, and it would force the heat up through those plastic trays. So those were about 80 bucks here in Ecuador, and I'll say that uh, they lasted us about a year, a little less. The problem is uh, twofold. The hard plastic trays would um, tend to get brittle from the heat and would break up, and the other thing that would happen is sometimes they kind of almost melt because the thermostat in these little um, uh, dehydrators would go out and then, you know, the, the heat would just melt them. And so we went through about two of those and said, we need a better solution. So the solution, um, the first thing that we did is we found someone that had brought a Excalibur dehydrator with them. And so we bought that used for not very much money. I think we paid about $75. This is the Excalibur. It has four trays. Now it does have the little plastic trays that come off. And this has been a, a good little dehydrator. Um, it, it's real nice because it has the fan in the back and then it forces the air out through each one of the trays evenly. The problems with the other type that we showed you, um, they tend to cook the bottom one first, if you will, and then the top one doesn't get as cooked. Well, we want it dehydrated evenly all the way through. So the Excalibur is, works real well for that. It's very small with only four trays, but we still use it, particularly when we have a small batch of herbs or something like that. We want to do some dill, you know, a little bit of something. So we'll use it for that. It does have an adjustable thermostat on it right here on the top, off and on switch, and I'll see if you can hear that. Makes a little bit of noise, but it's very quiet. So that makes it very nice. Um, so yeah, Excalibur is a pretty good brand. They tend to be expensive. Um, as I said, we bought this one used for 75. So um, Lisa's telling me behind the camera that no, no, we paid more than that. So it must've been a hundred, I would say, yeah. So I would say, you know, I'll look it up for you and we'll post a picture of what this particular model is running now. And uh, we'll see how much that is. So we quickly outgrew this one and we moved into another one. And where we bought this all stainless steel, more commercial type dehydrator here, we bought this, um, we have a, a company here that's a little bit like eBay slash um, Amazon, and it's called MercadoLibre.com.ec. So it's basically in English would be the free market.com.ec. So MercadoLibre.com.ec, and we or, we've actually ordered two of these. We ordered one for a friend. So this is a 12-tray, all stainless steel model. Now, the thing about shopping on Mercado Libre, if you're not used to it, you have to do a bank transfer and uh, transfer your money. Once you figure out how that works, it goes pretty easy. But you need to make sure you're shopping with a reputable seller. Uh, you need one that shows a lot of sales, and what we call a gold seller. Um, one that has very few complaints. And so if they're in the high 90 percentile of, um, you know, thumbs up, then yeah, you're, you're in good shape. So we ordered this and had it delivered, you know, they ship it here so within, within a week, within a couple of days usually, run about $450, you know, just kind of depending on which model you get. So the models that I'm going to show you here in the pictures um, are a little bit different. They may have the controls on the front where ours has them on the back, but essentially they're all the same. They do come from China, I believe, all of them. And so here's the nice thing. We told you this is all stainless steel, and it is. In the rear 
It has a real good amount of space back here where the fan lies. So it has lots of room to generate the air and the heat and force it through the trays. That's very important to get a really nice dehydration out of your product. It comes with 12 of these stainless steel trays. You can see through them. These clean up extremely well. They have not rusted. Have, I guess we've had this about four years now. So we've had zero issues with them. The trays are very simply, they slide in right there in the front. Has a stainless steel drip tray in the bottom. Um, that kind of catches anything that might fall through these trays here. So um, really like this, works extremely well. And uh, we can load this up with 12 trays, turn it on and does a marvelous job, marvelous job. Um, it does make a little bit of noise. Now, one of the things I want to tell you about raw foods is if you're going to dehydrate things and you're trying to adhere to the raw food model, raw food has got to be um, less than 118 degrees Fahrenheit. So somewhere between 104 and 118 degrees Fahrenheit. So these machines are all cali calibrated for centigrade. So we need to between, be between 40 and 48. And I think this one turns all the way down to about 30. Um, so it'll go pretty low and it goes pretty high as well. An on off button right there, it says 30 degrees centigrade right now. So I can adjust that temperature up and down if I like. I can set my time right here, up or down, however long I want it to go, and it's going to take off. Now you're going to hear it gets a little bit noisy as, as I talk, it'll, it'll warm up and get going. So this has this nice little stainless steel carry handle on top, and I'll tell you that that will tend to vibrate. So we cut a little piece of foam that we had, we shoved that in the handle, and guess what? The handle no longer vibrates. So just a quick little fix. So the type of foods that we have dehydrated, just about everything, um, I'm going off my little cheat sheet here. Um, we have dehydrated all sorts of herbs, dill, um, onions, uh, garlic, turmeric, you name it, we have dehydrated all of that. And I want to show you just a few things. This is the dehydrated turmeric right here. And we put the uh, desiccant inside these jars so it absorbs any moisture, little moisture absorbers. Now we don't grind the turmeric until we're ready to use it and then we put it in our little grinder and grind it. Because um, some products just don't do well if you powder them ahead of time and they tend to clog together no matter how much of the desiccant you put in the jar. So we recommend against that. Here's some powdered onion. And I mean, I don't know, you probably can't, it's all stuck to the jar. Yeah, that's why you don't powder in advance. It's better to leave the onions in chunks. Now you hear that start? A lot noisier than the Excalibur. But this is more of a commercial machine. So I would recommend putting this in a spare bedroom or somewhere, um, utility room, somewhere where you don't have to listen to it. But it's not terrible. I mean, I'm not struggling to talk over it or anything. The onions, oh boy, they're, they're still strong. Onions are whole, sliced them up. They're all dehydrated, ready to go. We do a, like a three pepper blend of peppers and um, we uh, grind them up and put them in here. This is great for adding as a topping for your steaks, chicken, veggies, whatever you wanna, you wanna put it on. And um, we have done, we've got our own little spice recipe that Lisa uses on our, our different uh, meats and things. And um, what is this, mushrooms, dear? I think that's mushrooms in there. So we can do just about anything that you wanna dehydrate. We have done beef jerky. Um, I would recommend that you get really good at slicing your meat and make sure you slice as thin as possible. And what we typically do is we take our beef jerky and we soak it in cocoa aminos. And if you don't know what cocoa aminos are, look those up. It's a wonderful product. It tastes a lot like teriyaki um, without all the bad things about teriyaki. So cocoa aminos are a great thing to use for that. Gives the meat a wonderful flavor. Lisa even cooks like pork in it here in the house. You'll stick it in the oven in a big pot, put a pork loin in there with some cocoa aminos. 
tastes really, really good. Kind of almost like a barbecue, if you would. So the cocoa aminos, we let that soak overnight, and then uh, we'll slice our meat. Or actually, we slice it first, and then we put it all in there with the cocoa aminos into the refrigerator, let it soak overnight. The next day, <clears throat> we'll take it out, put the meat on our trays, slide it in here. We get the most wonderful beef jerky. You can add pepper and salt to it if you want, season it any other way you want. To me, I like it with just cocoa aminos on it. Some people uh, want to experiment with the different things and feel free to get creative because you just can't hardly make a mistake. You could put too much pepper on it for some people. I don't do well with that, you know, real coarse black pepper, but a lot of people like that on their beef jerky. So as I said, we've done um, all sorts of herbs. We've done beef jerky. We've done bananas. We've done apples. We've done pineapple. And I'll say this about the pineapple. When you dehydrate pineapple, you're getting a sugar bomb in what you've got left. So it, if you're diabetic at all, pre-diabetic, be very, very careful with how much of that you eat because it's going to jack up your sugar. Um, it just concentrates that sugar in that little piece of pineapple. So be careful with that. Um, banana chips, man, we just use those for all kinds of things. And the dogs love banana chips. They will sit, roll over, whatever you want for the banana chips. We get a lot of bananas um, when they come in here. I mean, if you get two stalks of bananas, it's hard to go through them all. So there's a couple things we do with them. We do dehydrate them. Um, you can unpeel a banana and you can freeze it whole if you want to freeze your bananas to use later. It's perfectly acceptable. That works. Um, you, of course, you can make all the banana bread and all those wonderful things. But banana chips, man, they are just awesome. We order these little desiccant packs that we use here, also on Mercado Libre. I think I ordered like 5,000 of them for, you know, I don't know, 20 bucks or less. And so, again, those were shipped here in record time. You can order vacuum sealers on MercadoLibre.com and uh, the bags to go with them. Be careful on the bags. Some of the bags don't work as well. Uh, make sure you're getting a good quality bag that's meant for your vacuum sealer. Now, I mentioned the company called T. Ventus. They're in Loja, and I think they're in Cuenca as well. They have a vacuum sealer, very cheap one. We bought one. We still use it. It works extremely well. Um, again, you know, in that $78 range, it wasn't much. The bags that we were, they, we, I had the company order extra bags for me, and they were really good. Then we ordered some bags off Mercado Libre because they were super cheap, and that's what we got. We got super cheap bags. It did not work very well. If you can get your hands on the Ziploc vacuum sealer bags, those work extremely well. That's a good quality bag. Um, of course, you can also order a vacuum sealer from the States, have it shipped in. Um, that's as long as it's under the $400 eight pound limit. You can certainly do that, ship it and bring one in your suitcase. Um, that's also extremely uh, easy thing to do. But I will say that we're extremely happy with this. Now it's been sitting here running the whole time that I'm talking and you can probably hear it, uh, but it's not terribly loud. So it's got a 24 hour timer on it, up to 24 hours. So uh, you would need to check it every day if you're gonna need more than 24 hour time. So make sure you come in every day reset your timer on it for however much time you think it needs. Got a really handy glass front so you can look in and take a look at your product and see if it looks like it's dehydrating without having to open the front door all the time and let your heat escape. The thermostat on it is pretty cool. This thing will shut off when it's reached the right temperature and it's kind of very economical to shut on and off as it needs to so it's not always running at full tilt. Um, that works really well. Your Excalibur is going to run at the same speed all the time. Even though it's super quiet, it's running at that speed no matter what. These are a little smarter and they run a little quieter. Now I have seen these on Mercado Libre up to 20 trays. I've seen them from 8 trays, 10 tray, 12 tray, and I've seen a 20 tray on Mercado Libre. So for 20 trays, the problem with getting one that big, now they're going to be up about this high. Um, as opposed to this one. 
So if you only have three or four trays worth to do, you're wasting all that energy and all that dead space in there. So for us, the 12 tray is really, really good. And for just a quick, you know, throw some deal in there, this little Excalibur works just fine. So it's going to be a matter of choice. And let me tell you, this is such an economical way to save food, um, you know, be it emergency food, be it just I have too much produce coming in, I need to figure out what to do with it. Um, from that perspective, very, very important. So we couldn't live without one. We love it. Um, you know, we go, you know, probably a couple of months and we don't use it. And then all of a sudden we use it every day for, you know, three months. So it's kind of off on and on again. This one is held up extremely well. We don't take that great a care of it. We wipe it off and uh, always wash the trays when you get done. You don't want any kind of bacteria developing on there. Stainless steel is going to help prevent that. But trust me, you need to, to keep those trays clean. You can run them through the dishwasher. We have. Not too many houses here in Ecuador have dishwashers. We're lucky we do. Um, and we don't use it as much as we used to, but we do use the dishwasher for a sterilization purpose because it heats the water really ultra hot and that works out well for us. So I highly suggest MercadoLibre.com for this. Um, this would be a little hard to put in your suitcase, uh, but again, you can order it from right here in Vilcabamba. They'll deliver it. It's going to come out of Quito or Guayaquil, one of those two places. And um, usually about two days, three days tops, it's going to wind up here. So it's going to come typically either on the bus or it's going to come via a company called Servantriega. Servantriega is a local delivery company here in Ecuador, and they deliver all over Ecuador. Um, so Servant Triega does a real good job. We finally have an office here in Vilcabamba now. And so um, you'll go down to the Servant Triega office after you get a, a text that says your package is in. Go down there, show them your ID, your cedula, as we call it, and uh, they'll retrieve your package for you. So pretty simple, painless process. And once you learn to navigate Mercado Libre and navigate the process of uh, bank transfers, now you can hear that just shut off. So it's still running, but the heater kicked off. So right now the fan is just running and circulating the interior heat. Because it's reached this temperature, it's going to hold that temperature. Not making hardly any noise at all right now. Soon that'll kick back on again and it'll go again. So we love it. Um, there's not a particular brand name on this one. It just says dehydrator. So pretty generic brand name. All of them on Mercado Libre are going to have different names. Now, you hear that just kick back on again? Made a little rattle when it came back on. If I left this off, you hear how bad that rattles. So we learned just to keep this little piece of foam in there and that stops the rattle. Well, I hope that that was handy for you. I hope it was helpful. And uh, just to know that you can get a lot of things in this country that we could not get before. Um, McConnell Libre is a great source. T. Ventus has a lot of popular appliances and things. You're going to find these things here in Ecuador. Sometimes you have to look just a little bit, but they're here. Um, and again, you can always ship things in, you know, from Amazon to our local shippers here that actually bring the product in. So I hope that was helpful. Have a great day. Ciao for now. Hey, thanks for watching our video. Please like, subscribe, and share.